All right, so I'm back. I had to get some stuff. And the next story uh, we'll, com- we'll commonly call the jump scare <laughs> story, <laughs> which is uh, where we have the popular jump scare. Where l- This is where the critics are like, I like the horror movie with a bunch of jump scares, meaning we got to do this giant orchestra hit, and you better jump. You know, it's like, and jump scares have been around forever, but they were more like not forced upon you. You you were consensual about the jump scare, meaning like you went in the closet. You one of the best jump scares there is, and today it still scares me. Is there's a movie called Creep Show, which I recommend you watching. And you the the lady goes into the broom closet. Oh yeah, yes I do advise my students to take notes. So they go into the broom closet, and there uh, a and guess what happens? A broom falls. But you're not expecting it, and you, like, jump. There's no orchestra yeah. hit. There's no... Yeah. You know, the broom just falls. And it's, I'm also terrified of household appliances. Exactly. But the point is, you're not expecting. That's what a jump scare is. But a forced jump scare is what we're going to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Something that's overdone in a movie, and... Mm-hmm. It's annoying. Yes, it's not. It's like critics are like saying, "Oh come on, really?" You know, if people are going to scare, they're going to get scared. You can't like do a note on a keyboard to make people like jump. You know, that's not right. That's kind of unfair. It's like, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's it's. Let me explain. It's wrong. You know. Rip headphone users. <laughs> Wrong. It's like Wrong. <laughs> we need to put a warning up for rip headphone users. Exactly, you know. All right, so <laughs> so 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 we'll go into what I we'll call. We'll do subtitles. Yeah, the ju- exactly the jump scare story starring a young man who is frightened and it's, it's a young not- man with my level of anxiety. Right, he's uh, my level of stupidity. And I'll give him this because there's certain parts of the story I wish went certain ways, but it didn't. You know, like I was hoping it was going to go a certain way, but it just like, oh, okay. It's just yeah, like, and it was also just very confusing because it was very confusing. Well, yeah. it, there it, were parts that we didn't really understand until the end of the movie. And even after that, we had to really, like, look up what everything meant mm-hmm. before we realized. I even I pulled that up over in this tab. If yeah, technically, tab. technically, the second story to me, you could probably take the second story out, and it probably... It would still be a decent movie. Yeah, yeah it would be... Long, exactly. Yeah. I, I think the only thing that establishes the second scene is who this kid is. If it wasn't that the kid was in it, it, you know, this second story wouldn't even be in there. So real quick about the second story. It's basically like an urban legend type story where yeah. you have the kid who's... Uh, Illegally hits, driving his father's car. Right, and hits... Yeah, exactly, yeah. like your typical 80s, 90s slasher films. And he's going down the road, and he's talking on the cell phone, so he hits what could be a goat, a deer, a girl, a dog. It was definitely a Satan goat. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and those are typical. You can see those in England all the time, Satan goats. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's my God. What, that's what the Night Watcher thought he was messing with, honestly. Yeah, like, he's like, <laughs> I ain't going to win. The funniest. And, again, of course, they did the levity with the humor where he's calling the AAA of Britain there, and he gets his name wrong, which is funny. He's like, no, it's Ripken. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was another weird, That was just a really weird factor, I guess. But yes, continue. Yeah, you uh, the comedy makes people feel at ease, and once we make you feel at ease, we want to make you feel unease. So we do a little laughter there. It's Rip 
Chicken, you know, and which is supposed to be funny, and it kind of does. They kind of like overdo it though a little bit, you know, because they, they do it like three times, whatever. We get it. It's funny. It's funny. Okay. All right. So kills the no doesn't kill. Runs into this devil goat, and so I think it was uh, the only thing that kind of was kind of creepy, but it was like when the door opens and nothing's there in the back. The back door opens. Do you remember that? I thought that was pretty good. See, okay. When he continues driving and the door opens and then nothing happens, there's nothing in the car. Right. Um, but then he tries to get out and the that voice says, Stay. <laughs> F that. <And> <laughs> that was his. That was his. He literally <laughs> says, Fuck that. <laughs> and runs. I'm like, I'm done. I had a flashback of my father at that point. <laughs> no, look <Love> that. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> and he, he waits a second, and he's like, "Fuck that!" And I'm like, "It's out, run." <laughs> I think I'd rather not. <laughs> and then you I get the, that was the best part of the movie by yeah. far. That well, was my favorite part. now the thing is about the I roof did. was the moon roof open or is it yeah. just? Was it? The, I mean, it was actually opened, or was it well, like just the no, cover was open? It was just the skylight. Yeah. But let's see that at least our our main protagonist, uh, Mr. Goodman, did this time is he went to investigate. Yes, the and that's what I don't understand about the first part is why didn't he go to the old abandoned place? And that would have been a cool scene and whatever to set up. Because he was like, all right, this song being's crazy. We're going to move on to the next one. Yeah, we're going to move on to the next one. That's a British yeah. accent. John's so much better at it than me. No, I'm doing a Scottish accent. No, you Scottish accent. Oi, Sunbeam. Oi, Sunbeam. I can only say Oi, Sunbeam. Yeah. All right, so you get the... Yeah. Uh, so we get the cute little jump scare to scare us, and there's ends that, and really... Like I said, he investigates, and and I guess he gets an argument with somebody because he's looking at a pile of dung there or a pile of dirt or something. And Does he like, call it Sunbeam? Yeah, I call it Sunbeam. He is, isn't he talking to his recorder? Yeah, I believe so yeah, or something like that. you do whenever you're doing like either investigations or how I thought of it is I took a radio class in high school. And whenever yeah. you did interviews or any kind of like research, you would always, you know, voice comment all of the things. And... What I got from this scene is that uh, he goes to this place and he sees the ripped up, it was a ripped up tree in a pile mm-hmm. of dirt that kind of resembled a monster or a face. Right. And it was basically him on his recorder saying, you know, this kid was already having an anxiety attack. It was dark at night and his brain was playing tricks on him. He was seeing things and he's he's literally just saying like, Saying, I guess it's directed towards the guy who gave him these assignments. He's like, I don't find what's special about these cases. These are just people on the border of psychosis. Like, that's legitimately all there is to it. And then he goes back to uh, his car to drive away and investigate the next uh, the next uh, case. And he sees and this. He, he sees, sees himself. Yeah, he sees, like, a weird ghostly figure of himself a in the driver's side. Yeah, himself. like, it like was weird. Yeah, was the... Weird. <clears throat> The we thing didn't with the uh, for it either, no context. Right, and I'll say this: I'll probably say because the mirror thing is something part of it, because it, it, it's an Alice in Wonderland type uh, reference. You know that you're looking through another world, and that kind of gives us a little bit of a spoiler, you know, to go on, and because you know, like I said, we get the mirror at the end of the movie, but. Because everything is very heavy image, and of course, yes, someone took psychology and film school 101. Good for you. All right, so, but I, it was worth put together <laughs> better than just that. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. I mean, here's and I, I will go into lack of creativity later. But, <laughs> but like this second story. Uh, it's just a, I think it's like a sandwich. It's like, let's, you know, give you a little thing for the kids. This one's for the kids. You know, like the first one's like for the adults. And this is like. It definitely this, wasn't needed. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not saying it wasn't needed, but it was kind of like saying, you know, it wanted to say that we were poppy too, you know. You know, grandpa can rock too. 
All right, so Grandpa rocks a little bit. They have that thing. Then the third one story comes in. And like I said, this is more important than the rest of the stories, this story. Because like I said, that's the reason why they bought up the big gun, which was uh, Martin Freeman. Because he is like Britain's biggest actor right now. So he's in the film to kind of, you know, to to tie this all together, what's going on, what the heck's going on. So the third one is probably the best story. I and, think so. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It was, it was, it was so just. So, I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll let you go with it, run with it. Okay, so I guess I'll start by we meet the guy. We're, we're, uh, so Goodman goes to meet and interview this guy about his story. And they go on a walk. Uh, where do you, would you say they went on this walk? They went on a walk. They just went up into like the mountains, a hilly area, a hilly yeah. area. And then they go to this and we're little talking shack mm-hmm. that you would expect to be like an outhouse. Yeah. He opens it up and it's there's guns. Which, yeah. I mean, for Britain. So at that point, I assumed they were going shooting like for just gun target practice or gun. Like right, something to do all the time. Yeah, it's a pheasant yeah. type hunt, and Is and it? yeah, and so he's like. You know, going to do a little uh, small game hunting. And he tells uh, the story about how he marries this woman. Which with, is uh, a horror Bray- within herself. Whoever. Yeah. Huh? With breaks of the... In- yeah, that really was weird. He kept breaking so he could, like, text people. But I didn't really understand the significance of that unless you did. I mean, you... I'll explain that more. Or we can, yeah, we can explain right. it more later. Because well, it has to do so with the ending. story. Well, the story. Okay, so he, this guy uh, was with this woman for a while, and he's like, yo, I want kids. And she's like, I don't want to have kids until I'm a partner at my firm. Yeah. Which, I mean, you know, responsibilities. And eventually she did become a partner at her firm. But and by that before time. before she was rushing 40, um, as he said, yeah, so it was like it was right, you know, at the cusp of possibly not the best age to be trying to have kids. Yeah. But uh, they uh, ex- went and had surgical help. Yeah, and, he, he, he basically yeah. said she was dried up by that time. And, yeah. yeah. And then she ended up dying due During to childbirth. Birth, yeah. Um, but you, wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now you're going to the dying of the childbirth, but you guys like skip over that. That was part of the scary part when you were getting into this dying of childbirth because, you know, because he, he just explained, he was just explaining that, you know, she was dried up, she gets surgery, and then we go through the analogies of the house that there was something creepy going on in the house while she's in the hospital. Am I not right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then, and then of course, like, you know, he sees a premonition of her. Yeah. In the house while she's supposed to be at the hospital, right. yeah. Exactly. And so you guys, like, skip over that because that's, like, was one of the supposed to be scary parts of the film. You know? I don't just know how to really, like, tie it all and like, say so, it. Because explain how she dies, because that's very important, because we get, he sees a premonition of her, which is really scary. We're dead. Yeah. (laughs) So he goes into the room with the baby, or the baby's room that's supposed to. The nursery. Yeah, the nursery room. Um, And there's, it's just him in the room, and he goes over, he folds one of the diapers, and uh, then he walks away. And the sheet was like, the sheet was really cool because it was like moving and stuff. Because it was the baby and the baby's not there. It's just the sheet moving. Well, that was after uh, two things. Or after the whole, after everything started. Yeah. It started with the diapers flying. He turns around. He's like, what? And, and he's then, looking at the weird doll. Yeah. Then he goes over and picks up the doll and is like, huh. Okay. Sets it back down. And then turns around, turns back around or something, and then uh, he sees something moving under the blanket in the baby carriage. I was yeah. really weird. That's what and got then, me. I was like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, there but, was about like three visits he had, you know, that was going on, I think. And then the third one, of course, is um, the third one, is, of course, is the final where we find out that she's dead. And then he tells well, him how she dies. 
I want to point out that whenever he's walking towards the baby carriage with the premonition, like, standing up, starting to try to stand up under the blanket, um, it was focusing on his head, which was closer to the camera. Right. And um, everything in front of him was blurred out, but it would start to get ever so slightly clearer as it would get towards it. Yeah. And once he stops walking towards it, it comes into focus. Yeah, and there's a lot of amazing blurring effects in this, yeah. and I'll, I'll give him credit because there's some couple blurring scenes, like at the railroad tracks, uh, which we're coming close to it, that I couldn't tell you if they were green screened or not because they did so good. Because, like, you know, to do that kind of blurring effect that they did, you would probably have to green screen two of those and they did a really good job because if they're green screen it's hard to tell and Mm -hmm. i I say kudos on those effects all right so let's get to the point that she's dead and why does she how does she die this thing yeah go ahead they said that the baby split her in two yes why would you do that why would that happen because it was, she was deformed old. and huge. A monster. Yes. Because baby was monster. Yeah. Baby. <laughs> in fact, that's that. I feel like I'm in writing room of this. Okay, so she split in two. Why do you think that happens? And this Yale graduate writer going, baby, baby monster. <laughs> All right, guys, how are we going to do this? She splits in two. Why? Baby, Baby was monster. <laughs> well, I think we find the title for this video. All right, and so, okay, guys, spoilers alert from now on. So what happens after he tells him the wife he died tells him, he's like yeah this is my story and my wife died and then some weird thing about my son by the way do you like this gun alright so which ties in to the end as well yeah it does because she goes, wait yeah. we're not there yet <laughs> cause, all right, cause, rainbow land alright so we gotta go back to the trailer where old man is at and finish this off because now we've changed okay all our stories are done and this as well at this yeah. Point. yeah yeah all our right. yeah all our stories are done we go back to the old man to wrap this up because it's a long wrap up but hey whatever and then once he goes back that's kind of where it wraps uh, up. the goodman story starts yeah I'd say essentially, that. yeah. That's kind of where his... So technically it would be four story. Yeah, exactly. It gives a little bit of his past and, and again, whatever, you know. The dude's haircut, what's up with that? I mean, did he not, like, have a mother or something say, if you're going to cut your hair, why don't we just shave the rest of it off, you know? I was like, but, you know, it's a bully scene. The kid goes into the a tunnel, it's got a... Yeah. A mental disability and also um, asthma yeah. goes into it, into the uh, the okay. drainage system. I yeah, guess. the sewers. The sewer. Yeah, the, these kids are trying to, like, kind of pull a prank on him and are like, oh, if you go in this tunnel and tell us all ten numbers, you can be part of our gang. But really, there's only, like, nine numbers yeah. written or whatever. And yeah. so he goes into the uh, the sewer and he counts all the numbers up until nine, and then he's like, I want to come out. And they're like, keep going. Don't you dare come out. I, I don't know if I'm actually... No, they able. would say bad stuff. Just yeah. don't even say it. But they would, they would, you know, say bad things. Um, They would call him... Kojak. Yeah. Kojak. Just say Kojak, because that's um, all I remember. Calling, which I, I couldn't know. figure that one out. I could not figure that one out in my life, I mean, because his head was not completely bald. It, I believe that what they were going for was that he had alopecia, mm-hmm. um, which is a disease where you lose spots in your hair, or if you have full body alopecia, you don't have hair on any parts of your body. Yeah. Um, well, that's why I, I couldn't figure out because I would have just shaved my kid's head. I'd be like, zoo, zoo, whatever. And you yeah, know. but when you, when it would grow back in, it would be spotty. Anyway, eh, that's true. And you'd have to just keep reshaving it basically every couple yeah. days. So I mean, this kid's got issues. He's got asthma, alopecia. 
He's obviously mentally challenged. I mean, you can even, I mean, you can even come up with a, uh, more like victim than this kid. I mean, mm-hmm. he's just, yeah. you know, someone feels sorry for him. And, and of course, like, and then you have this kid who's also bullied as well in this situation. So it's like, and I think that's kind of a story tell of real life is like everybody thinks their life is worse than somebody else's. Not Kojak. Yeah. Right. I, um, <laughs> well, he was try he was going to tell the kid that, yo, there's only nine numbers, but then one of the bullies picks up one of the broken bottles that he had thrown a rock at and he puts it up to Goodman's neck and he's like, say anything. I dare you. And so he stays quiet. But then they don't realize that the, that he has asthma and um, he starts having a seizure. Yeah. Um, and then he dies and all of the kids. Um, somebody asked him if he'd ever killed anybody, and that's what he says after hesitating. And so that kind of is revealed at that part, which I kind of thought was pretty good. Um, I like that. There was a little bit of subtlety that was well done. Um, but he runs away, and then he goes back to his older self and is... And it goes on from there. Yeah, yeah, and and it's like, well, the thing is, is um, the key to this is, of course, you know, the kid, and which is like, kind of, you know, to build up to this kid who's kind of like his guilt or death or uh, or you say regret. So, but anyways, we're wrapping it up because, you know. Uh, this uh, Martin Freeman goes through all the stories about you know why you think and tries to I don't know give this TED talk I guess you would say that <laughs> just I you know it it really doesn't make any sense I mean in the light of it and like I said there's some good little camera effects and then we switch over to what really happens and and it goes into the whole. Oh, it was all a dream kind of deal. It was all this, you know, which was, yeah, he's in a coma and we reveal that, of course. Suicide. Yeah. Which, yeah, which confused me a lot because I'm like, well, it doesn't really show that. Like, when did he try to commit suicide? Well, it was manifested. It was manifested through the representation of his hallucination of that one guy shooting himself in the face. Well, I mean, and exactly. And the thing is, is we've done this before. It's like how many movies we say, oh, it's all a dream. He was in a coma. He was this. And like I said, it really wasn't really that original. And it sometimes it kind of, but they do it little with Martin Freeman's little TED talk that he does. It kind of like builds a little bit more tension. So it doesn't seem like it's ripping off all those movies. And when I was a kid, that was like the worst thing that you could do to me is when I watch a scary movie and they say it's all a dream. Then I'm like, well, yeah. that was a ripoff because it's yeah. like, why am I, I'm supposed to be scared to death. And here's the weird thing about this movie is you have these real life, you have these ghost stories, and then it gets into what I would call the dream sequence part where it's like anything goes. Like now we can just That's like, story. exactly, anything goes and then we get into the coma and then of course we establish that the watchman is a janitor. The kid was an orderly, and of course, Martin Freeman's the doctor. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It wraps it, it up into a trinity. Cool. I enjoyed it for sure. Yeah, but one thing I didn't like was at the very end of the movie, it's like, well, time to get him one last jump scare. Bird hits window. 
Yeah, and and the thing is, there there's there's that little bit of psychology they did before they drop it out of college. You know, that's in all those movies where you have the red balloon flying when you take Cinema 101. Well, of course, you have the black bird hitting the window. That signifies death. Yeah. And so, I, oh, yeah, I did say I took a little bit of psychology, of course. And so it's like, let's stick it in the movie. Like, if you ever see uh, another movie is, uh, uh, I can't think of the movie, but you see the red balloon, you know, flying off, which is, oh, that's so wonderful. It's like in a million films. So is the black bird hit in the window you see that in several films um and and it's like this is a and here's the thing i go on a little bit of the critiques about this what i mean i did not hate it i'll be honest with you i i i did not hate it uh acting is good uh there's some funny parts of it that i like i if you go to their other film that they did which is a lady in black which i was like watch that film i think it's far more enjoyable and sets you in a creepy feeling. And it was before the whole jump scare crap that's taken over cinema. It's really exciting. It's a really good film. 1989. Check it out. It's basically the same actors who did that to, uh, are in this film. The thing is with this film is why I like the K horror when you get in the Korean horror is even if some of the stories aren't original, they give you a visual that sticks in your head the rest of of the, your life. And the problem with this film, is, and this with any British film, is like, yeah, we got the little girl's ghost, but how many times have we done that visually? And oh, you, yeah, the deformed baby. Oh, God, we've done this so many times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's like, there really isn't anything really original, but it is enjoyable to watch. It's kind of like experienced actors saying, well, let's do our take of this pop thing that's already been done. And it's kind of like, I don't know. I mean, I just like watching, I'll give you an example of Korean horror that has like visuals that stick your head. Like there's one movie I watched where the girl is killing all her husbands through poisoning and stuff to get her life insurance. And the insurance guy finds out about it. And the next scene where she turns from the, you know, the widow where he wants to believe she's real to this creepy person trying to kill him. And she's got this club foot and she's walking down with an axe chasing him with this club foot. And it just like sticks in your mind. You get that club foot. It's scary as I'll get out. And of course, like if you go back to the J-Horror where you have the schoolgirl ghost where it starts, that stuff sticks to your mind and now everybody copies it. And this is the thing, like with British horror, they really haven't done anything original except for 28 Days, which is like one of the best zombie movies of all time. It just changed zombie movies all together. It started the whole new zombie phase is 28 Days, you know. You wouldn't probably have Walking Dead. You wouldn't have all this stuff that's popular now if it wasn't for 28 Days. And that was a British movie. This one is kind of like copying what other people are doing. And, yeah, I definitely see that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just not... It's so enjoyable. At yeah. least they took yeah. good aspects from different movies and put them together, so... Right, I mean, like I said, I did not hate it. I watched the movie and think I did not make me mad. It was just, It's just kind of like, you know, like uh appetizer that you eat to kind of like calm your stomach. But, mm-hmm. you know, I, I just think horror films should like make you want to throw up. Or make you feel uneasy. I wanted to have nightmares yeah. after I watched this film, and I didn't have nightmares. I, I will okay. I will say I did have a dream. I didn't have a nightmare, <laughs> but I definitely had a dream about. Um, you got about five minutes to tell us about it. About <laughs> Professor Goodman, and it kind of like continued his story, but it was like a five minute continuation, and then I woke up. Right. Okay, and then why did they select the Monster Mash as the ending song? Oh my god. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's the monster man. I don't know, something. I mean, it, it kind of like... I don't it, know, something. Yeah, it's kind of like... I don't know. It kind of like that audacity. Thing? Like, they were like, see, we're doing scary movies again. That's what I felt like. And we'll play the monster bash. Whatever, dude. Whatever. But, you know, and, and I like said, if you just kind of like well, want a calming story or whatever, you know, snuggle up with your girlfriend or something, this might be a fairly good little movie. But other than that, I mean, it's okay. I mean, uh, acting's good. A lot of great effects. 
You know, it, it, if I was a film student and I did this film, I'd probably get an award. But experienced filmmakers, I don't. I think you could do just a tiny bit. I, I, I say this every <laughs> review, but I have seen worse movies. <laughs> <laughs> I I have reviewed worse movies. Dark <laughs> this one was enjoyable. It had good themes. I it was. I feel it was like a good movie. To <laughs> fully enjoy it, you need to have a psychology degree. Either that, or have to watch it again. Now that yeah. you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I think to. I mean, I understand what you're saying. It's like that's what I'm saying. It did try to scare on like a intellectual level, but these are British people we're talking about because, yeah. it, you know, it's like with us Americans, everything's got to be fast, fast food, you know, fast uh, microwave food. Everything's got to be fast, 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 fast. With them, they've got to build tension, and they take a long time to build tension. And but it's like I'll tell you if you talking about there's a film that I watched where the uh, a girl who's a female ghost vampire or whatever that was made in uh, Poland and that film will freak the crap out of you and it's not like like it's gory it's just creepy as all get out everything just gets creepier and creepier the whole the whole environment is creepy and you're like it's not like when they jump scare it's just being creepy and it's like I like being creeped out Mm. Right. So we'll take a, we're going to cut off here, guys. Uh, would you recommend it, Alex? If, um. <laughs> sure, Lucas, go ahead. Your name is I Alex now. I, I, I identify as, you. yeah, I identify <laughs> as Alex. <laughs> Alright, did you like it? I liked it. Would you recommend I didn't it? I think it's something that I would want to see again, but it was definitely worth, worth watching the first time, I guess. And I do say with my opinion that I feel like you need a, at least for, like, obviously since British uh, movies are more slow to get to the um, the punchline, I guess, since it's British horror and all that, and they're smarter, I guess. Um, it, didn't, it did seem like a smarter film. You had yeah, to think you, more, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I liked it. It was a good movie. Um, once I kind of understood like the plot and all that, it I, I started to like it a lot. So, if how, what I say is I enjoyed it. If you're looking for a movie that's gonna scare you, don't watch this movie. If no. you're looking for a movie that'll like kind of freak you out and make you think, then yeah, watch this movie. <laughs> what he said. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. What and it's like with me, I. Uh, like I said, it's just one of those films that's calming, you know, and it's, it is, does keep your attention. I'll give them that. And, and that's where I, I, I'd go with it. Uh, like you said, it's not really that scary if you're trying to get yourself creeped out and get nightmares or whatever. It's not one of those type films, but it does, you know, it delivers. I mean, it's, it was based on a play. You know, and I'm trying to figure out how in the world they did this. Yeah, in a play. I have no idea how they would make it a play. But it was based on a real play. And, and I think that might be one of the reasons why it doesn't really stand the test of time because it's from an older time. I feel like one of the things that made it worth seeing for us was the effects. Because they, yeah. did, they did really well with the effects. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't feel like I would want to watch it without it, just because of how it's done. Yeah, so. they did the effects well, for sure. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean I've, I've established that camera work and that kind of thing. And yeah. and in my opinion, like I said, I didn't hate it. That's all I can say. Yeah. As far <laughs> yeah, <That was> good. <laughs> right, because I, I can't. You know, it's a movie, and it's it's structured good. Like you said, you know, but it's like with me, you know, I watch art house flicks that are more artier than this. So, uh, but I don't know if it was trying to dumb itself down to a lower uh, common denominator or not. <laughs> if that's what they're trying to do, if they were, I feel very insulted if that was the case. But, you know, like watch it if, you know, you just want like, like I said, you got nothing better to do. 
And, you know, Pornhub doesn't have, like, any good stuff on. Yeah, this would be a good thing to watch. And and just uh, so forth. All right, so I'm going to cut off early, talk to you guys in a couple minutes, and then we'll be out here. So say goodbye to YouTubers. Goodbye, YouTubers. Goodbye. Like, subscribe. Like. You You're all yes, my I'm, children. Yes, like, subscribe, and share. Leave Has- us some comments what you thought. Yeah. Has- do you like my hair? Because I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you like my hair? No, lol. What the? I was watching her today. Oh, it was the the hair just scared me to death. I do not like it. I wish you would go back to your old hairstyle. And please I'll watch the movie. Your hair scared me more than exactly. the movie. And to understand the psychological intent of this movie, let me start from the beginning. Okay, I'm done with you guys. All right, talk to you later. Bye, guys. Who's your daddy?